Hello, and Saranai. Thank you for your question. And the first thing to say is restraint. It's very true that restraint helps because that means when you sit, there's less work to be done, less obstructions that come. So uh, anyone who just looks at headlines just to know what's going on, just for practical purposes and doesn't soak in so much like what we're studying in Pamada Bihari Sutta, it's much better. Even the conversations we have, we know that it's just easier to access higher concentration more of the time without trouble if there's nothing dragging us down. So delighting in Dhamma is often very helpful and, and then the restraint. So that, that's very good. For anyone who's practicing, you should be able to see the benefit of that when you restrain. Now, it's not always possible because different people's situation, you're working, it's more difficult to restrain. You have to, unfortunately, soak in more. But then you also find different ways and means according to your circumstances to do that. Now, your question about switching meditation, I mean, it's a very interesting one because when you study this sutta, you realize that you are the one who is in control of your meditation that you follow Buddha's instructions, and if it's going well, you don't need to change. That's what's very important. So there are certain meditations where it goes the way you want because maybe you're skilled at that meditation or, or maybe all the conditions are favorable on that day and no unwholesome thoughts come. But when unwholesome things come, I guess when you look at the application of this teaching, it's good to look at starting from the first to the second to the third to the fourth to the fifth. It's very clear that in this sutta, the medicine is sequential and consecutive. When you first start out, you don't necessarily have to go, you, you're not meant to go to number three, for example, and, and forget about it and, and clear the mind and not have contact. It's more that you start with number one. So if we go back to the slide then you know that the first thing you do is you, you look at that thought and it depends whether it's a person or whether it's a situation. You need to diagnose. So like we were saying in the, in the talk, if it's you're doing Girimananda Sutta and then something comes up, some person comes to mind and it's an unwholesome thought, you need to look at what kind of thought is that. Is it a central thought? Is it a averse thought? Is it a harming thought? And that's when you decide which to switch to. So it depends on what is arising in the mind. When that doesn't work, you go to the next one. You look at the danger in still having that same thing bother you in the meditation. And if that doesn't subdue, you go to the next one, which is getting, not making contact. That means not allowing the thoughts to, to come back in. When we're going through, there's certain things that are lying dormant. So sometimes we think, when we get skilled in our meditation practice, that's it, no more problems. <laughs> Unfortunately, what we find is there's always things that are lying dormant that we haven't seen before. Or it's Mara coming to say, hey, you have a look at this, you know, and it might be something very present in our lives at the time, the conditions that are coming right now for all of us in our different circumstances. So the approach is you go sequentially through this. That's when you switch. But it's up to you what you switch to because that's the proactive thing. It has to suit what is coming into the mind. And as you know, in our toolkits, we're very blessed to have many, many different meditations that we've learned and understood of the Buddha to apply. So there's nothing really to be worried about. It's just picking the right one. And when we do that, you need to see what is the result then, particularly pertaining to the unwholesome thought. If it persists, you keep going down this list. Each time, it doesn't mean you change the meditation. It really depends how it is going. So you need to gauge. You become very skilled at reading your meditation. I think this is what, what it's talking about. Like when uh, the Buddha talks about the master of the courses and ways of thought, it's knowing what to do, when to heat the mind, when to cool it, when to sit back but also what you're meditating on. And sometimes the switch is very useful. Like as we saw with Satarahara, the four nutriments, sometimes we could be doing metta bhavana, but it, because the conditions for the mind are very unwholesome at some point, you need to switch to something like Satarahara and just go with that meditation. The, the result is actually more important in terms of whether you get to enter higher concentration. Yeah, because we, we become more skilled at meditation. So what happens is 
What's more important is being able to access so that the mind is happy. We want to lift the mind. That That's our intention with this. We want to be with the truth. We want to be with right, right view. Just based on that question, as a discussion point, our meditation is for us to be able to wield our way through it, right? manage it. The more you go into Buddha's teaching, you, you realize you are the one that is directing this. This is for the higher training. This is not something that is passive. And so even though we are suvicha to Buddha and the instructions, there are also instructions that say, how do you navigate when things are going wrong? As in problems are arising, obstructions are coming, challenges are coming. And so what's really nice is once you start to practice this, like apply this kind of medicine, you get more confidence get more confidence about it and you also don't become so fearful about why am I wobbly uh, what normally happens sometimes in the beginning is with the absorptions you wobble in the beginning it wobbles and you feel like you're being kicked out of dana you can kick out of concentration but you're following all the steps but often it's the underlying things which are coming up in the mind or it's other things that we've done misconduct we've done it's not purified enough that's why some of the meditations by like Metta Bhavana it begins with a lot of cleansing, a lot of cleansing in order to help us to have that strong foundation because you need to be secluded from unwholesome states. You need to be secluded from sensual pleasure. Upasatha is a very wonderful thing is because you take precepts on this day, you, you devote it to certain things. There are blessings on Upasatha itself. So trying to get to higher concentration on the water, I think there are many blessings of that. And these are all the things that help us. So very interesting, like this sutta is a very interesting one. And so much goodness from the Buddha in terms of what he has realized.